Today's message has been brought to you by Faith Family Church in Billings, Montana. For more information, visit faithfamilybillings.com. Um, let's uh, go ahead and open to 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you would. We're, um, I'm actually in part 5 of a series, and we've had some breaks in this. So you can go back and listen online if you like, but it's called Rooted. Um, and it's, uh, I, I'm the king of one title plus a subtitle because I didn't like the first title enough. Otherwise, my titles would be, you know, pages long. It would be bad. But um, rooted, root, uh, rooted is the message, but depth of character is what we're talking about. And uh, this kind of came out of Second Peter. We're going to Second Timothy 3. But, um, or First Peter, I don't remember where. We'll get there in the notes here in just a second. Um, talking about adding to your faith. And we're talking about uh, the correction of God, the discipline of God, the pruning of God. How many have read about the pruning of God uh, in the Gospel of John, how he prunes? Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and Jesus prunes, he corrects, he disciplines us. You know, sometimes people get this idea that since we're under grace, we don't need correction. But I just don't see that in the grace message called the epistles. They're there, amen? Amen. Now, sometimes we don't like that, and I understand why, but we got to be careful as humans that we don't let pride rise up where humility should remain, okay? Because it's easy to do. I know I've done it many times. The Lord has dealt with me, and, and he has me dealing. He's, he's, in order to be exalted, you have to go low. But listen to me. Here's the trick, okay? You can't just pretend to go low because you like the idea of being exalted, this is heart issues. You say, what do you mean by that? In other words, I can voice something, but it doesn't mean my heart's right in it. You have to have your heart right in it in order for it to happen. And that takes some uh, time with the Lord. You, you have to spend time with him and really be uh, uh, candid with him i mean he knows already so you're wasting your breath if you 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 may be able to trick me but how many know you can't trick the lord because we we just we're we lay naked before him do you understand what that means that doesn't mean you don't have clothes on it means he looks right through you in fact in talking about the judgment as far as that's concerned that's what it's talking about when we stand before the Lord even people I years ago I was listening to a um, this is a dangerous path so I don't know if I recommend you do it but I was looking on uh, uh, people that had gone to hell on YouTube how many know you if you punch something in on YouTube you could find some things I found that YouTube theologians are very confused <laughs> okay so um, but anyway, uh, I was watching this gentleman and he, he was sharing his uh, testimony about what took place and how he died. And when he was standing before the throne of God, he knew he deserved hell before he ever got there. Now how? Because when you're in the presence of God, everything is laid bare. There's nothing to distort the vision that you have of circumstances or that you have of you because in his light we see light in his light we see light which means what we can't really understand anything unless we know God first and we can't understand our condition unless we know him first. And he knows us better than anything. So thank God for the covenant of mercy and grace that we have with him. As long as those who are willing will participate according to the rules, we'll be able to continue to increase. And as we legitimately humble ourselves before the Lord, not a fake thing, not a put on thing, not a religious language thing, not a we came together and sang a song about revival so automatically it's going to happen. I mean, duh. No, we have to be in a place where we're legitimately open before him going, Lord, show me how I'm not functioning the way you created me to be. Now, I'm not saying you have to earn it. Jesus earned it. But you do have to function in faith out of understanding, out of the grace or the divine seed that Peter talks about that's already been placed inside of you to be able to release what's there. 
How many know you have an enemy that's come against you? And that enemy, if he can, will get your mind going in a direction that is outside of transformation. Romans 12, right? He will, if he can get you and keep you in that place of not understanding and not living in light through fellowship with the Lord, he'll have you convinced that you are something that you're not. You're something that's contrary to what Christ created to you, you to be in his death, burial, and resurrection. How many are thinking right now, this is hitting, hitting home? That's good. It should because the Lord is the one who made us. He knows us, and there's only one way to get what is inside of us out, and that's to have a relationship with him, and then therefore cooperate by faith. Amen? James said faith without works is dead. So we're talking about pruning, and, and I looked up, um, there's actually some good stuff on Google about pruning. I'm not a Google theologian either, but you know, there is some good truth here that I saw um, that correlates with uh, Scripture. And it says this, Pruning fruit trees is a necessary chore that improves sunlight penetration and increases air movement through the tree. Pruning also develops the structure of the tree so that it can support the crop load. Remember we talked about that. How many would like to bear much fruit? Then you're going to have to be pruned. You know, have you ever prayed, God, I'd like increase, God, we're going to, we need to see more people saved, you know, da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden these things start getting taken out of your life. And you're like, no, 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 Lord, I didn't want that. I wanted increase. And he's like, well, you're going to have to turn that off and get rid of that. And you, no, 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 I just want more fruit. And he's going, yeah, if I give you more fruit, but I haven't increased the strength of the branch, you're going to break. So he has to correct us. He has to continue to mold us and shape us from the inside out. Most of the molding and shaping that I've seen that takes place in the, new, in the new covenant, as you read through the epistles, has to do with two things. Transformation of the mind through the word of God and the crucifixion of your flesh. Paul dealt with those probably more than anything. And then, of course, when he was dealing with those who had the background of the Jewish culture, he'd deal with the law situation in a bunch. But most people in the New Testament church aren't trying to kill cows to get right with God or sheep or whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not. They're, most people in the New Testament church are dealing with flesh and their enemy enticing them through the desires of the flesh. So in order to have more fruit... You've got to be pruned. Damaged limbs are susceptible to disease and insect infestations that could further damage the tree. We talked about, have you ever met a damaged, insect-infested Christian? <laughs> There's healing for you. <laughs> Amen. Pruning of trees should always be done with a purpose in mind. The purposes for pruning are varied. Some pruning is done to change or train a plant's growing pattern or to restrict growth. The Lord took this away from me. Yeah, maybe your flesh was growing too much in that area. Amen? Um, at the beginning of the year, sometimes, sometimes people will go on diets because they want to restrict growth in an area. <laughs> Other forms of pruning may be required to maintain or improve plant health or the quality of flowers, fruit, and foliage. So in other words, what are we saying there? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Well, I don't, Lord, if I, I don't want to give that up. I don't want to change this. Yeah, but I have more fruit for you if you'll obey me here. Yeah, but that hurts when that's cut off. Uh-huh. Yep, that's what it does. It hurts. I mean, know that uh, pruning something, it, that, that pain could feel like, oh, it's trying to kill me. <laughs> that's a truer statement than you might know. Yeah. Okay? He's not technically trying to kill you. He's trying to stop that flesh. Paul said, I die daily. See, I don't want to be a castaway. How about you? I don't want to be thrown out. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, 
and that from childhood you have known the scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for what? Correction. For instruction in what? Righteousness. That the man of God or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you're going to be complete, you have to follow the previous verses. If you're going to be thorough for every good work. Now, God doesn't wait for us to reach perfection before he uses us. Otherwise, he'd never use anybody. But he does have a maturing process that needs to be followed through. Amen? How many know that Paul more than once said, hey, I wanted to preach something else to you, but you couldn't handle it? Have you ever wondered why, Lord, where are the deeper things? (laughs) It might be more telling on us than we think. Amen? God's not going to give you something that you, when you haven't done the first things first. There's no social promotion in the kingdom. Well, I've been saved a long time. That could mean that you've just been saved a long time. In other words, God doesn't care how small the desk feels, no matter how big you get. He doesn't just move you on because he's afraid you're going to beat up the other little kids in the class. How many know that happens in school? Eventually, the kid that refuses to, they have to move them on because they're going to be too big. You know, it's tough for an 18-year-old to sit in a six-year-old's desk. And that's why some Christians are so crabby because they're stuck in that desk. (laughs) They can't get out of that. They stand up and the desk is stuck to them, you know? And everybody in the classroom is going, that's the bully. Why? Because he's stuck in that desk. He's mad. But if if, if we repent, if we grow, if we develop, God will show us more and give us more. But that takes humility on our part. That takes humility on our part. So the scripture is given for this, and I would give uh, more uh, definition here, but I want to get one more truth into you this morning before we move on. Let's go to 2 Peter 1, if you would, please. I want to just hit a couple of these this morning that we're to add to. 2 Peter 1, verse 1 says this, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Boy, that's powerful. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power has given to us, look at this, all things that pertain to what? Life and godliness through the what? Knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, verse 4, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Wow, that's quite a statement. That's a strong statement. Um, uh, That challenges me. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you know why some people struggle with their salvation? Because they don't add to their faith. They don't add to their faith. We have to add to our faith. People struggle, and we live in a culture where Christianity, um, for the most part, at times has seemed like uh, an inch deep and a mile wide is better than very narrow and very deep. 
where it can be, and what you've had is you do have people that are genuinely saved. Absolutely. They are born again. They have Christ in their heart. But beyond that, they've never added to their faith. And so you get, what you get is, you have people that are born again, they get excited, they have uh, uh, this joy in them, they have all the nature of God within them, that sin nature has been taken out and and, and removed, and and this new nature of God is now on the inside, and and that lasts for a little while, but if you don't develop spiritually, the enemy will eat your lunch. He will. If we don't add to our faith these things, the enemy has the ability. He's done it for years. I know, and I, and I agree. The enemy is defeated. And I, I agree with, uh, to some degree, the enemy is a, a ding-dong. He's an idiot. I mean, anybody that would try and fight God has got to be dumb. Okay? That's just not a good idea. But... He is very crafty. And if we don't understand our God and his word, we will be deceived by the enemy. And it's not enough to just go, oh, no, I won't. (laughs) You're the one he's a hunting for. Unless you know the Lord, you're going to be in trouble. Because guess what? How many read where Jesus, how many know Jesus didn't ever lie? He never told a lie. He, you know, he told the story about the storm coming to the man who built his house on the sand and on the, which means the storm doesn't pick favorites. It just comes. But which one survived? The one who built his house on the rock. Do you think that's easy Sounds like work to me. In fact, if you read it, I believe it's in the Gospel of Luke. It says the man that built his house on the rock dug deep. That sounds like sweat. Ah, uh, there's some sand over there. That'll work. People treat their Christianity like this. Oh, well, yeah, good enough. I know a verse or two. I got it. And then they come in. Sean. It's falling apart. The whole house is falling apart. Did did you build it on on the deep rock? Well, we, you know, we did a, I've read a devotion or two. Yeah, I know, you thought this was gonna be fun, church. (laughs) (laughs) Can't we just go back to worship? I just feel the presence of God. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I love David. Because he could write a poem, but he could slay a giant. Yeah. I don't want to slay a giant. I don't mind writing a poem. Fine. Let's go slay something. Let's go, let's go kill a devil. Amen? Let's go drag somebody out of darkness into light. We have to be strong, and in order to be strong, we're going to have to add to. Amen? So it talks about knowledge, and we talked about that. You can go back and listen. We, it talks about diligence, and you can go back and listen on the website. We, we talked about that. We talked about virtue. Virtue is any excellence of a person in body or mind or a thing, an eminent endowment, property or, qu- property or quality. Virtue is essentially the expression of God in the Christian life. In other words, we are to add to our faith virtue. What does that mean? Faith without works is dead. So wherever you are, wherever you go, you are a carrier of the kingdom. And if you are a virtuous carrier of the kingdom, you are adding to the expression of God where you are at. It doesn't, it, 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 uh, it, It means this, you're not one that just registers the temperature of the room, you're one who sets the temperature of the room. You're not just reading, oh, it's 62 degrees in here. No, you walk in and go, I'm 74 degrees. Welcome to the heat. Why? Because you're amazing. No, because you're dead, and the one who lives in you is absolutely glorious. You add to your faith virtue. Amen? And then after that, knowledge. Knowledge, and I think we actually did talk about this, but knowledge is not just knowing a truth. It's experience and knowing. 
Do you know our church today, and many times, I've done this, I've fallen into it before, you think you know something because you can recite it. The Lord looks at it this way. He knows you know something when you do it. Amen. If you don't do it, you don't know it yet. And do you know the experience of that knowledge is found in the doing, not just in the understanding? You have to do. Amen. I graduated Bible college and I was ready to go preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. I know things about the ministry. And then I got into the ministry and I about ate my lunch. Why? Because I didn't know anything. I had head knowledge. That getting into the ministry and actually doing it is a totally different thing. It's the same wherever you're at. How many went to college and you're in the profession now that you went to college for? It's, it goes, it's a different thing when you go from, yeah, I got A, B, or C, got it, right. And then you're in the middle of the emergency room and you're the nurse. <laughs> a, B, A, uh, you, you, you get a whole nother level of knowledge. We need to have knowledge added to our faith. Then patience. Ooh, how many love this one? <laughs> Sorry, let me go self-control first. How about two, two great ones that people love. Self-control is defined as temperance or continent, con- continuance or strength. The very, yes, yeah, not continence. No, that's not it. Yeah. Let's use our self-control right now so we can move on in the message. <laughs> Self-control is defined as temperance or continuance or strength. The various powers bestowed by God upon man are capable of abuse. The right use demands the controlling power of the will under the operation of the Spirit of God. Does that make sense? Knowledge by itself without the spirit of self-control in operation can lead to a puffing up in a person. Applying the knowledge that you learn is what keeps you out of pride. It's one thing to look at your neighbor and go, they should love their spouse. It's another thing for you to love your spouse. Amen. <clears throat> Just having knowledge is not enough. It must be applied through continuous action or practice. As a usual thing that we will see in the next verses, this self-control deals with controlling the desires of the flesh. Proverbs 16, 16, you can just drop drop these down. Proverbs 16, 32 says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Proverbs 25, 28 says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Wow, that is telling well, I just, I just have a bad temper. I just lose control. Then you are a city without walls and the devil is going to take you out because you have no protection. What do walls do? They keep the good in and the bad. But if you have no walls, everything is running everywhere. Amen. Self-control is a big deal. All right, patience. We'll end on this one. And then next week, we'll get into godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. You're going to love those two. Three. Patience is defined as cheerful endurance. Wow. I mean, this, is, this, is area, this is an area I have, I'm growing in. I'm better than I used to be, but I still got area to grow in. Because my personality, this is just my natural kind of gait. It's the way I was raised. You know, I mean, my grandpa, who's in heaven now, but he'd hire me (laughs) and my older brother on the weekends, and we'd go work with him. And if you didn't move fast enough, you got a boot in the rear end. You know what I mean by that? How many have ever had a horse bite on the back of your arm? (laughs) I'm not talking about an actual horse. Now, it hurts when an actual horse does it. I'm talking about when you take your knuckles and grab the back of somebody. Yeah, it'll get your attention. In other words, move quick, move quick, move quick. And I was trained that way. And then I worked construction. And construction, time is money. Your, 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 your job is, is bid on a square foot price, not an hourly price. So if you're an hourly guy and your boss is a square foot guy, he's got to train you to move quick so that he can actually make some money. Amen? Not just pay you. So we were trained to go fast, 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 fast. Well, God's not always that way. 
Now, in work situations, I understand that. That's one thing. But when that's built into you, now it translates into everything else I do, including parenting. (laughs) I'm the only one, I'm sure. That's why you're all laughing. Anyway, so when my kids wouldn't move fast enough, I did not have cheerful endurance. (laughs) It's like, bless those little kids, you know. They're just kids. I'm going to sit down. (laughs) no I motivate them but me motivating them in love is different than just motivating them in the flesh it doesn't mean love doesn't mean I have to let them disobey but I do have to correct and lead and discipline from the aspect and character of the resurrection within me Amen. amen which includes what somebody say patience <clears throat> patient continuance or waiting is patience. Steadfast waiting or sustaining. This sounds like a strong believer to me. This is a person who has control over their body and its desires. Why add patience to self control? Because your flesh and mind will want to run away from people and circumstances that are difficult. But if we stay steadfast in waiting with joy, we show forth faith, and when it is done according to James, we will be what? Perfect and complete, lacking. Wow, how, would, how many want to lack nothing? <laughs> lacking nothing. Patience is not something that develops automatically. We must work at it. James 1, 2 through 8 gives us the right approach. We must expect trials to come. How many know you should expect trials to come? I'm not saying you're believing for them. I said they're coming. (laughs) It's scriptural. You know, people think, well, you're a word of faith guy. I can't even believe you said that. It's because it's in the Bible, which is where you get faith, which is where we get the definition word of faith. Amen. Well, can't you just can't you just make your problems vanish? I can have problems there and walk through them by faith and they will vanish. But it doesn't, as long as I'm on the earth and draw on oxygen and have heartbeats, the devil's here. And crazy people who don't know how to drive, by the way. I w- <laughs> patience, patience, patience. <laughs> Joyful endurance. <laughs> because without trials, we would never have the opportunity to exercise patience. What if everything just went right? It'd be a shame if you were all dressed up in that shiny armor and had nowhere to go. (laughs) Learn how to fight the fight of faith. We must, by faith, walk in the fruit of patience while the trial works against us because we know that God is at work for our good in the midst of our trials. If we need wisdom in making decisions, God will grant that wisdom if we ask him. Nobody enjoys trials, but we will enjoy the results of our patience as we, by faith, walk with God through them because he is causing everything to work together for our good and his glory. Patience will primarily be exercised by people and trials. How many know people should, is first? How many are married? You're tried. I don't even have to ask for a testimony. I'm glad we're laughing about this and not crying. (laughs) No, depth of character. Rooted. Add to your faith. I like that. Would you stand, please? Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands to the Lord for just a second. Father, we just worship you. We honor you. We praise you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for the transforming that just took place, Lord, by your word. Thank you, Father, that you are breaking down strongholds of the enemy in people's minds, that minds are being changed, that there's an empowerment that's taking place, Lord, that we are functioning and growing. We are adding to our faith these qualities. Lord, we desire to live and not stumble in one area according to your promises. Lord, we'll continue to do as Paul told us that he did, forgetting those things that are behind, we press on. We press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.
Father, we just give you glory for your word and your presence. We give you the honor and the glory for everything that's been done today uh, that you've ministered by your spirit and by your word. Lord, we know that we have nothing without you, that we can do nothing without you. But believing you and with you and in line with your will, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible. So we thank you for that, Lord. You're so faithful to us, Father. I just declare your word, Lord, over this group, according to Psalms 91. Lord, that your angels encamp round about them, that they keep them, that they watch over them. They are your children. Lord, that they are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Lord, that your hand is upon them. We thank you for that. We thank you for it. If there's anybody here today that doesn't know the Lord, I want to give this opportunity, or you need ministry in body, whether it's prayer for healing or you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, uh, we'd be glad to minister to you. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, listen, you don't want to leave here without that. You need to give your heart to Jesus. It's not enough to just be a church member. It's not enough to just say, well, I was baptized as a kid. It's not enough to even just be baptized. You have to receive Christ into your heart. There needs to be a public declaration of your faith out of your own mouth. Jesus, you are the Son of God. You did die for me, and I believe you and receive you into my heart. That, that needs to be done. And so if, if that's you, we're going to release everybody. But if you need ministry of every, any kind this morning, please come. We'll minister to you, um, and we bless you. And have a great week, and we'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. If you would like more information about Faith Family Church, including service times and location, visit faithfamilybillings.com.